Even though there are a million and one kinds of picks available, choosing one is not actually as much a matter of personal preference as you might think. Certain pick designs work better with certain techniques. So we're going to give you a super simple guide to choosing a pick based on the kind of technique you use. Ready? Here it goes. Some players hold the pick flat against the string, like this, while others use a bit of the edge against the string in a technique which we call edge picking. Edge picking creates sliding, which can make your pick attack feel smoother and also adds a pleasing bass boost to the tone. But using a lot of it can be very slidey and add even more bass for a darker sound. If you use a lot of edge picking, more than about 30 degrees, Choose a pointy pick to give you a more solid pluck on the string and bring back some treble at the same time. This is the Dunlop Jazz 3 and is probably the most popular pointy pick in the world. You'll recognize it by its smaller shape and beveled edge. But any pick with this pointed shape, even if it's not small like this, will do fine. If you play with less edge picking, less than about 30 degrees, choose a pick with a rounder point, like the nearly ubiquitous 351 shape. You've seen this one before. It looks like a slice of pizza with the point rounded over. Compared to a pointy pick, the rounder point of the 351 shape will put more meat on the string for more bass response. If you play with very low or nearly flat edge picking, a 351 pick shape will still do just fine. But try a slightly heavier gauge, like one millimeter or heavier, usually marketed as heavy. These picks are rounded even on their edge, so you'll get a little extra sliding and a little extra smoothness in your pick attack and picking motion, even with the pick perfectly flat against the string. This goes double if you play bluegrass. Bluegrass players often play with no edge picking at all. And is, are you playing pretty flat on the string with the yeah, pick? Yeah, pretty much flat. And everybody says, oh, you should tilt your pick yeah. this way or that way or mm -hmm. this or that. And it's like, okay, but this is just how I've done it. And it seems to work. So you can use an even rounder point pick, like the famous 346 shape, which looks like a rounded over equilateral triangle. Just as before, you can choose a heavier gauge pick that even looks a little rounded when you view it down the edge. This'll help the pick slide smoothly. That just sounds way better. Mm. So it turns out there's a relationship between the thickness of the pick, the shape of the point, and the amount of edge picking you're using. Specifically, pick thickness and pick pointiness are edge picking amplifiers. What I mean by that is if you have a certain amount of edge picking and you make the pick thicker, you get more edge picking effect for more sliding and more bass. For the same amount of edge picking, if you make the point rounder, you also get more edge picking effect for more sliding and again, more bass. Now, the reverse is also true. For that same amount of edge picking, if you make the pick thinner, you get less edge picking effect for less sliding and more treble. And if you make the point pointier, you also get less edge picking effect. Again, for more aggressive, plucky attack with less bass. Now, this is really cool and took us a long time to figure this out. Taken together, we think of these mechanical relationships as kind of the rule of roundness. If you make the point of the pick rounder in this dimension, or if you make its gauge thicker so that it gets rounder in this dimension, you get more edge picking effect. At one end of the spectrum, you have so much roundness and so much sliding that the sound becomes bassy and the pick attack is very quiet. At the other end of the spectrum, you have relatively little roundness and little sliding, so the sound is trebly and the attack is aggressively plucky. Over time, players have gravitated, consciously or otherwise, to combinations designed to keep the roundness factor somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. For players that use a lot of edge picking, you will generally see a pointier point. And especially if it's a heavier gauge pick, very often you will see a bevel like your Jazz 3 design. On the other hand, if a player plays flatter against the string where they don't use a lot of edge picking, you will very often see a rounder point pick like a 351 type of point. And also very often a heavier gauge of pick to add in some of that bass and sliding. That is your bluegrass formula. 
Once you get outside of these common combinations, below, let's say, the medium gauge of pick and above the heavy gauge of pick, especially if there's no bevel present, now you're into kind of the extremes of pick gauge, and these pick gauges present challenges of their own. Really heavy picks in the two to three millimeter range will have a bevel or a taper, so the edge you're playing with isn't really two or three millimeter. But they still respond differently than thinner picks, very often with a pronounced and unavoidable chirp to the pick attack. Which can make it tricky to learn how to get smooth attack, especially when you're just starting out. Super heavy and super thin picks can of course work, and you may even like those sounds, but why give yourself more obstacles than you need when you're just starting out? The material your pick is made of won't inhibit your ability to perform the different techniques we're gonna learn. So in that sense, it is more a matter of personal preference. However, if you're new and you don't really have any personal preferences yet, we can make some simple recommendations. Here are two super common options you're likely to find just about anywhere. Nylon is a great all-around material. It's super common, reasonably sturdy, and comes in all kinds of shapes and thicknesses, and is dirt cheap. And the Dunlop Nylon range is probably the most well-known nylon pick in the classic 351 shape. The Jazz 3 is probably the most well-known nylon pick of the pointy variety. Perhaps the most popular pick material of all time is celluloid. This is the original material that the D'Andrea company used to launch the modern guitar pick renaissance in the 1920s. The most famous celluloid pick is probably the Fender 351, modeled after the original D'Andrea 351 design. But you can also get pointy picks in this material too. Like nylon, celluloid is a super common pick material, easy to find, and also generally affordable. Bluegrass is one style where picks made from harder materials are somewhat more common, like Dunlop's Prime Tone line of picks and boutique manufacturer Blue Chips Vespel, a very hard and smooth industrial material. If you play bluegrass and you happen to have picks made from harder materials like these, that's totally fine, but I'd still stick with picks in that more common medium to heavy range of gauges, up to about 1.4 millimeters or so, to minimize issues with chirping. If you want to nerd out on the different pick materials, how they feel, what they sound like, how they wear over time, you can check out our super extensive pick design and function tests, where we test pretty much every pick and pick material under the sun. But for now, and especially if you're just getting started, I'd actually recommend skipping them. When you're choosing a pick, the most important characteristics are the shape of the point and the thickness, because these are what affect how the pick grabs the string when you use different amounts of edge picking. The formula is pretty simple. For more edge picking, choose a pointier pick. And for less edge picking, choose a pick with a rounder point. And for really low edge picking, where you play flat against the string, choose a pick that's a little thicker so the edge has some roundness to it, but not any more than about 1.4 millimeters or so. Anything beyond that might make it a little more difficult to learn technique. But what if you're just starting out and you don't know what your technique is gonna look like yet? It's a fair question. Well, here's a simple recommendation. Get all of them. Get a pointy pick with a Jazz 3 style point. Get a rounder point pick with that classic 351 shape point, somewhere again in that medium to heavy gauge range. And grab that 346 shape point just in case you get a bluegrass craving. With all three of these tools, you'll have everything you need to play any technique you want to learn. <laughs>